Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from My Online Training Hub. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can create a slicer that allows us to filter for a rolling period. Now, my rolling period happens to be the last 12 months or older than the last 12 months, but yours could be any period you like. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any way to automatically filter by rolling periods in pivot tables and pivot charts. So what we need to do is add a field to our source data. Mine is on this sheet here and I'm going to put it into column C. So the way we'll do this is I need to classify every date in column A into a period, whether that's the last 12 months or older than the last 12 months. Now, my dates are in day, month, year format, and I've just got some stock trading volumes that we're analyzing. So what we'll do is in column C, we'll put an if formula in that compares this date in column A to this date in cell F1, which I've created using the today function. And all that does is returns the date from your computer's clock. So if that's wrong, then this won't work. So best check that the today function returns the correct date. The other thing you'll notice is I've given the cell a name today, and we'll be using that in our formula. So let's go ahead and build it. If today minus the date in column A, is less than 365, then we'll say this is the last 12 months. If it's not, then we'll say it's greater than, oops, greater than 12 months. Now you can put any text you like in here. Whatever you put in here will be what's presented in your slicer. So you can modify the formula as you need. So we can see that Excel has gone and classified all of these dates into older than 12 months and everything onwards into the last 12 months. My data only goes up to 5th of May. So now that we've got this column in our source data, we can use it in our pivot table or pivot chart or as a slicer or all three. Now, if you look at my field list, you can see I've got date, volume and rolling period. They're the fields from my source data and then I've got an extra field for years and that's because I've grouped my dates in the pivot table into months and years so the years field is automatically added by Excel for me and you can see I haven't actually used rolling period in my pivot table or pivot chart I've only used it up here as a slicer so you don't have to have the period or this rolling period present you can use it just for the slicer so now I can go ahead and filter my data for the last 12 months and as I add new data and refresh the pivot table and pivot chart it will automatically incorporate that data for me and filter out the old data. So one thing I should do though is if I look at my pivot table I've got May 2014 and May 2015 so it's not clear from this information whether this is the whole of May or just part of it. And what I'd like to do is make that absolutely clear by adding a title to the chart that displays the dates. So I'm going to create a custom dynamic label that will update as my data and date updates. Now I'm not going to go through how to write this formula step by step because it involves the text function, the index function and the match function and concatenating text. So if you don't know any of those things, I'll put links on the blog post for tutorials for those particular functions but if you are familiar with index match and text and concatenating text then you can follow along but I'm going to go through it quite quickly. So the first thing I want to do is find the first date in my range so I'll use index to index the column A and then I'm going to use the match function let's just scroll back up so we can see the formula. I'm going to use the match function to find the first instance of last 12 months in this rolling period column C and for my last argument for match I'm going to choose zero for exact match and what that will do is just find the first instance of last 12 months and it will return this date. So close match and close index. So there's my starting date for my period. Now we're going to use index and match again. And this time, instead of highlighting the column, I'm going to use the structured references and just 
the autocomplete to type in the reference. So index match. So my lookup value is going to be last 12 months again. And then the lookup array is my table and the column rolling period. And then instead of exact match, this time I'm going to put one in. Now what one will do is returns the less than and essentially all it's going to do is return the last value in the column for the last 12 months. So I'll close match, close index. Okay, so there's our date range. Now, the other thing we want to do is because this is returning a number, if I were to join these two numbers together by concatenating them with the ampersand, it will return two serial numbers, which is no good to me. So what we need to do is convert them into text. So I'll wrap my formula in the text function and then I'm going to say I want it formatted as day, month, year. Remember my dates are day, month, year because I'm in Australia. And the same for this one, convert it to day, month, month, month. So it says the month name. Okay, so now I have two text dates. Let's create a text string. Remember this is going to be my chart title. So I want it to be a bit meaningful. So we're going to add volume. That's what we're reporting in our chart. Volume and then the starting date, the first date. And then I want some more text too. And then the last date, the ending date. So there's my text string. That's going to form my chart title. Volume from the 7th of May 14 through to 5th of May 15. So now I can insert that into my chart. Let's add a chart title. And then while that chart title is selected, equals in the formula bar, click on the cell containing your text string and press enter. So now I have a dynamic chart label that will update as I add new data to my file and refresh the pivot table. I know I ran through creating that quite quickly and I've broken it down into stages. If you're confident with these formulas then you can add it all into just the one big long formula and you'll see if you download the file that's what I've done in my example. So there you have using slices to filter for a rolling period and a dynamic chart text label. If you like this video please take a moment to click the thumbs up and or leave me a comment and if you want to download the workbook Go over to my blog and you'll find download links and you'll find more links to tutorials for index and match in the text function. Um, be sure to sign up to our weekly Excel newsletter so you can learn more tips and tricks about Excel to help you stand out from the crowd and make your job easier so you can go home early. Thanks for watching. So now I can go ahead and filter my data. Oh iPads. <laughs>